by special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! This is the Lone Ranger. If you want to be a champion at anything, remember, others have done it in spite of obstacles. Take rodeo champion Bob Maynard. He did it the hard way. He proved champions are made, not born. Bob didn't even have the advantage of growing up on a western ranch. As a boy, he lived in Chicago. But Bob started riding when he was eight years old. At 14 in California, he became a stable hand. Today... Bob Maynard is one of the top money winners in rodeo competition. He sure is, Lone Ranger. And like many champions in all sports, Bob still chooses Wheaties for his favorite training dish. There's no question about it. Champions are made, not born. And there's no question why champions choose Wheaties for their training diet. They want that famous wheat energy. They get it with Wheaties because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. The Indian nation embraced the territory that is now Oklahoma and extended from the northern border of Texas to the southern border of Kansas. The herd of cattle being driven northward through the nation was a small one. It was dawn when the herd riders guiding the animals along a trail that wound through the hilly country rode into the ambush. The Texas common were unprepared, and their attackers, outlaws disguised as Indians, outnumbered them three to one. The fury of the rustlers' onslaught and their blazing guns overcame the Texans before the latter could save themselves and their herd. Laws rode away a few minutes later, they drove the stolen cattle through the thickly wooded country to the west. Choctaw Plains, a once thriving community in the Indian nation, had become a ghost town. Only four men remained in the deserted hamlet, and among these was the former marshal of the town, Tom Dawson. Though his office had long been abolished, Tom still wore his badge and was called Marshal by all who knew and remembered him. Ho, 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 On the afternoon of the ambush, a rider galloped into Choctaw Plains and ran into the ramshackle house where Tom Dawson and the three other pioneers were playing cards. Marshal, the engines are on the warpath. I just came across a lot of dead and wounded trail hands from Texas on the main road near Twin Hills. I was able to bandage some of them, but they'll need help. The five men returned with a covered wagon to the scene of the carnage. They treated the wounds of the survivors and heard the story of the attack from those who were able to talk. After the wounded men were placed in the wagon to be taken to Choctaw Plains, Marshal Dawson said... Take him back to our shack, men, and try to keep him alive. Oh, yeah. I'll start for Kansas Territory now. If I ride hard, I ought to reach there by tomorrow night. Then go ahead, Marshal. We'll do like you said. 
Come steady, Comet. Ben, when I come back, I'll have the army with me, as well as your doctor. Get it. Get it. Later that day, near sunset, miles from the scene of the attack, the murdering rustlers rested, safe in the secret canyon that was their hideout. Oh, well, is it? <laughs> Gang leader Ford Gary returned from inspecting the stolen cattle, now grazing in the lush fields. He stood talking to Joe Romapo, one of the rustlers. Joe, oh, that's a fine lot of beef. They'll take on weight, too, with all the grass and water down here. Yeah, they'd be worth plenty when we take them into Kansas later on. Oh. Are you going to start changing their bronze tomorrow? No, we have plenty of time. Nobody will ever locate us in this place. When the time comes to start our drive to Dodge City, we'll have ten times as many cows as we have here now. Ten times as many? Oh, boss, you're kidding. No, I'm not. I have Red Seward and Doc Belden planted in one of the North Texas ranches, the Circle R.O. They'll notify us when the Circle R.O. herd quits Texas and heads this way. Like Pete did about that bunch today. The Circle R.O. is a big outfit, boss. Sure is. Red's worked himself in with old man Ogden, the owner. Red sent word he thinks he'll be driving more than 2,000 head. Hey, boss, you don't expect to take over 2,000 cows, do you? That all depends on what... Joe, look. Someone's driving down from the rim. Boys, get your guns out. Right. All right. Boss, it must be one of our men. Nobody else would ever find their way through that slit in the rocks up there. We can't take chances. Keep that hombre covered all the way. Of course. It looks like Doc Belden's horse, see? Yeah. yeah that is Doc Belden. Ah, you're right. Put your guns away. Doc Belden had been riding for almost two days. After greeting the outlaws, he told Ford Gary... Boss, I rode with the Circle R.O. outfit as far as the Canadian River. Doc, you mean they're that near to here? Yeah, we took off last week. But Red told me to hang on for a while before riding to let you know. He said he'll arrange to have the outfit stop where he said he would on the day after tomorrow. Well, what do you know? How's he arranging that? <laughs> Red said he told old man Ogden, who owns the outfit, talked him into making him trail well, boss. Yeah, he said he knows every inch of the Indian nation. He wasn't lying when he said that. Boys, you heard that, didn't you? Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Then stick in those engine clothes till the day after tomorrow. Red and I arranged a plan a long time ago. Now it's going to work. We'll take over the Circle R.O. outfit at the Bend in the Hill Road. <laughs> Good old Red. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had been in Kansas. On the morning after the attack by the rustlers, they crossed the Cimarron River and headed south through the Indian nation. That afternoon, they slowed their horses as they saw a rider coming toward them. Easy, Joe. Easy. Easy. Hello, that's Tom Dawson from Choctaw Plains. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? During his years in the Indian nation, Marshal Tom Dawson had been helped often by the masked man and Indian when trouble threatened him. Oh, hello, oh, oh. Hi there, mister. Hello, hello. Oh. The three men exchanged greetings. Then, without prompting, the former lawman, seething with indignation, gave an account of the Indian ambush as related to him by the wounded Texans. The Lone Ranger listened with interest. But when Dawson finished, the masked man spoke with a tone of puzzled unbelief. Marshal, I don't doubt the story. Yet I can't conceive any tribe in the Indian nation making such an attack. Huh? Why not? Well, for one thing, the Indians have just signed a treaty with our government. Ah, treaties mean nothing to them. Oh, I don't agree. But regardless of that, Indians don't usually attack trail herds in the way you described. Not true, Kimasabi. Marshal, did you see the government agent for this territory? No, oh, he's way over west. It'd be a waste of time. Well, what about Chief Red Eagle? Did you go to his reservation and inquire about the attack? Well, no. Suppose it was his tribe did the rustling. I'd be scalped before I could get help. No, sir, there's only one thing to do. Get the army. And that's where I'm heading. So long. Adios. Adios. Be careful. Yeah, come it. Yeah, as the impatient ex-marshal rode away, the Lone Ranger spoke to Tonto. Tonto, we'll ride to the scene of the ambush and try to pick up a trail there. But first, we'll go to the reservation of Chief Red Eagle. Come on, Tonto. Come on, Tonto. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the reservation of the great chief Red Eagle that night, all was quiet. Oh, 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 Red Eagle knew the Lone Ranger was a friend of the Indians. After warm salutations, he was told the reason for the masked man's visit. 
the Indian chief denied all knowledge of the murderous attack. Men who say Indians kill white men, steal cows, tell big lie. The dead can't lie, Red Eagle. The men who were wounded have no reason to. Maybe so. Me not lie. Me say Indians not kill white men, steal cows. Well, perhaps one of your tribes may have acted without your knowing it. Man who cover face... Say before him, Tonto, go to place where white men say Indians kill him. Yes, that's right. We intend to ride there as soon as we leave this camp. Then Red Eagle want Indian braves to go with man who cover face. Red Eagle and all good Indians want to find whoever kill white men. We get braves ready to ride now. And when them go, Red Eagle ride with them. Less than an hour later, after messengers had been sent to other tribes, Chief Red Eagle and his warriors rode from the reservation with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Did you ever hear of a cereal box that sings? Well, I'm going to tell you about a special Wheaties box that practically does just that. Here, listen to a few seconds of this record. Now, wasn't that record sharp and clear? But here's an amazing thing about it. It came from the front of a special Wheaties box. That's right, there's an actual five-inch plastic record sealed right on the front of this special Wheaties box I'm talking about. All you do is take a pair of scissors and cut the record out, easy as pie. Then play it on any 78 RPM manually controlled record player. And listen, Pony Boy is just one of the tunes you can get. There's also On Top of Old Smokey, Glow Worm, Blue Tail Fly... Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and many others. So go down to your grocer right now and pick up the special Wheaties record box. Remember, these records are absolutely free of extra cost. A real bargain in fun. Now to continue. Shortly before noon, Fort Garry and his band of rustlers, all in Indian disguise, prepared to leave the secret valley. Boys, this is our biggest job. We're going to have to do more shooting than we ever did before. And we've got to keep the cows from stampeding when we do. Red's driving the herd over the back trail. You know how the trail narrows after the turn at Snake Bend? Yeah. yeah. And how there's a lot of boulders on both sides of the road? Yeah. Between the road and the woods? Sure. Yeah, we know. Well, that's where we'll be waiting. Some of us on one side of the road and some on the other. Joe. Oh, yeah, boss? You stay here with Tex and Slim and keep an eye on the cows. And watch the entrance. I don't think we're ever going to have visitors here, but it's best to keep on the lookout, just in case we do. All right, boss. Come on, Tex. Yeah. Slim. The rest of you boys, follow me. Get it! Come on! Come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the Indians followed the prints left by the stolen cattle and the horses of the rustlers from the scene of the ambush. The trail ended at the entrance to the secret valley from which the rustlers had ridden away but a few minutes before. Red Eagle spoke. So, this is where trail leads. Red Eagle know this place. See space between rocks? Yes. Between rocks, path which lead to valley, which Red Eagle think nobody but Indians know. You mean there's a secret valley on the other side of that passage? Hmm. It'd be a good place. Hide cows. Come. We ride and see. One silver. Come on, just follow. Come on. Red Eagle led the other horsemen between the brush-covered rocks. The path began to slant downward, and the rock walls ended. 
Suddenly, the riders found themselves heading down a wide, grassy incline that led to a vast pasture, hemmed in on all sides by high slate walls. You must have Look, many cows there. Yes, no doubt of it. This is the rustler's hideout. Ah. Joe Ramapo and the other two rustlers, Tex and Slim, saw the Lone Ranger and the Indians heading down into their valley. They began to shoot at the invaders. The Lone Ranger and Tonto reached for their guns, and a masked man called to Red Eagle. I only see three men so far. Let's ride down there shooting. Go suddenly! The Lone Ranger, followed by Tonto, led the way into the secret valley. The Indians followed, and as the sloping trail widened, the air was filled with the sound of their shots. Hello, we hit one of those men. Uh, hit other crook, too. Him fall. There seems to be no more than those three. Other man, stop shooting. Him wave bandana. He's surrendering. Come on, let's get there and question him. Come on, Hello. Hello. Joe Ramapo, unwounded, was frightened by the appearance of the hostile Indian band. While Tonto and the Indians bandaged the wounded rustlers, the Lone Ranger, using the threat of punishment by the Indians who stood with him, forced Joe Ramapo to tell everything. He concluded... And, and they're going to ambush the outfit, the snake band, about two miles from here. Me no place him say. We find them. Good. Chief, leave one of your men to guard these three. We'll ride to snake band. Uh. <laughs> Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the Indians rode from the secret valley. They followed Red Eagle until he raised his hand in a signal of halt near a thickly wooded area. The men dismounted, and Red Eagle, speaking low, said to the Lone Ranger, Snake Bend, other side trees. That place where crooks tell us rustlers wait. If we move through the trees slowly, we may be able to sneak up behind them. Uh, grass high, too. Crawl through grass. Then let's start crawling. Come on, fellow. Uh -huh. Chief, look. Straight ahead. Uh, me see. Men dressed like Indians hide behind rocks. They evidently plan to carry out their ambush on foot from behind the boulders. Kimasabi. Yes. Man and horse come from road. Ride to where them stand. He's making some report to them. Chief, let's start crawling toward them again. Mm, we do it. The horseman who had come from the road to where the rustlers waited behind a giant boulder was Doc Belden. He'd been sent to locate the whereabouts of the Circle R.O. herd and was now giving Ford Gary the information. Boss, I located them. They're on the back trail about a mile or so from here. They'll be along soon. Red has the outfit slowed down to a walk, and he's riding far out in front of it with old man Ogden. Boys, you hear that? Yeah. You know what to do now when they get here. I better get my bunch of boys over at the other side of the road, huh, boss? Yeah. You boys who are supposed to be on the other side, follow Doc. Right. Let's go, boys. Yeah. Go, brothers. Stay right here. The rustlers, restless Indians, turned their horses in startled surprise to behold a masked man and a band of Indians rise from the tall grass with guns aimed. Look, real Indians and a masked man. Boys, we're in a trap. Start shooting. We'll tell you all you do. Here. The masked man and the Indians with him were firing before the rustlers could use their guns effectively. Outlaws fell from their horses to the ground, and a shot from the Lone Ranger caught Ford Gary in the shoulder. Get on my shoulder! Jack, get the masked man! Yeah, you dirty... You're too slow, mister. Kimasabi, look. Outlaws raising hands. Oh, sure. Some of the outlaws, seeing their leaders shot and finding little chance of escape, were raising their hands in surrender. Don't oh, shoot! We give up! Oh, it's no use fighting! We're not going to get our money! So we give up! Yeah, I'm not going to lose my life for no reason! All right. All of you, throw your guns down and raise your hands. If you don't... Do what the masked man says, boy! Yeah, right. That's it. Red Eagle, suppose you have your men look after these killers. Uh, me do. Uh, me help Fargo. bandage men shot. Do that, Toto. Red Eagle, we'll ride down to the road. I want to be there when that man Red Seward gives his signal for the attack. Red Seward rode far ahead of the herd with rancher Russell Ogden. 
Ogden was puzzled as they rode around a bend in the road. Hey, Red, look at this. Rocks and boulders on both sides of the road here. The cows can't come through here. It's too narrow. We'll have to stop the herd and go through slowly. <laughs> yes, sir, that's what I figured. What? It'll make things easier. What are you talking about? Ho, 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 ho. All right, boys. Get ready to shoot them down. They'll be here in a minute. Are you crazy? Who are you yelling at? I'm going to shoot you right now, Ogden. Red, that gun don't shoot. I got her, you dumb ox. I got her right now. Because... Oh, my arm. Who no. did that? Who? Oh, a masked man. Oh, Silver. Oh, he just hit a big fella. Oh, my arm. I got him just in time. Oh. Mr. Ogden, turn around. Ride back and keep the herd from coming through here. I'll take care of this man. Why, uh, yeah. Sure, sure. Get up there. Slow him down. Stop him. Don't come through here. The sun was low in the sky. The entire Circle R.O. herd was grazing alongside the back trail, a short distance from the bend where Russell Ogden had succeeded in stopping the animal's progress. A band of Indians stood guard over the rustlers, who, on close inspection, resembled not at all the Indians they pretended to be. Mr. Ogden was talking to his riders and to Chief Reddy. And that masked man crippled Seward's arm and saved my life. He also saved my stock when he did that. But they might have been crushed. They might have stampeded. They might have... Well, anything might have happened. But it didn't, boss. That's all that counts. You're right, Harry. Our cattle's safe. And the outfit that was ambushed a few days ago will get theirs back from that secret valley. Red Eagle, braves, ready to take crooks to meet soldiers who come with marshals. We'll help you, Chief. We'll go back to the main trail and head north together. Too bad the mask man didn't stay with us to see final justice done to these crooks. Final justice being the gallows. Man who cover face do everything to get crooks. When him do that, him let law do rest. I know he certainly has done everything for me. Him do everything for Indians, too. Prove Indians not kill white men. If him not come and tell Red Eagle... Maybe soldiers, Marshal, never believe Red Eagle not kill white men, steal cows. All I can say is a lot of things did happen, just like a lot of other things didn't. <laughs> and like we all agree, the dids and the didn'ts were only possible because of that fellow you call the Lone Ranger. I'll still... Doris is 13, and she is a diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. <laughs> she's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. No wonder Cheerios gives you real go power. It's made from oats, and every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help give you healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... She's feeling her Cheerios. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.